Alright, hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a network bridge on uh, OpenWRT using Relayed. The first thing you'll want to do is actually have it set to the default software. The reason I'm making this video is because I've had to do this like half a million times and I'm really tired of forgetting things, so this is the easiest way to set it up. There are other ways to set it up, but this is the way that works for me. I tried every other tutorial on the entire internet, and none of them worked for this one. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is plug directly into the um, the router that has OpenWRT on it. Once you have it plugged directly in, you will want to change your IP address. This is all assuming that you're still on the original. Um, you just installed OpenWRT and you haven't changed any settings. If you have changed any settings, just go ahead and do a, a factory reset on it. And then we'll, you'll be right where I am. Alright, I don't know who this video is going to help, but hopefully I'll help someone because it took me forever to figure this out and I had to do it like six more times to keep messing things up later on. This When you do this, you won't have to worry about redoing anything. So anyway, go into your adapter settings and click on IP version 4, inner protocol version 4, and you'll want to set a manual IP address. So this is just like if you were on your network normally. So we're going to do 192.168.1.2. And hey, look, it's already showing up. Okay. And this isn't really important since we're not going to be on the internet yet, but you can just fill this in with 8 if you want to use uh, Google's public DNS whatever okay and boom now you see up here we have the open wrt login page uh if you've set a path if you reset it you'll be exactly where i am right now so just go into your web browser type in i'll show you 192.168.1.1 boom <coughs> it'll say there's no password set you won't be able to log in via ssh until you set this but we're going to do that in a little bit the default password is admin Let's go ahead and go over here. You can click on this link and it will open up this page where you set your uh, SSH password. Once you have this set, you'll be able to log in through SSH. And Telnet will no longer work. So up until this point, you could use Telnet. You'll need Telnet to factory set if you lost your password or IP address. I'll do that in a video if people request it. Anyway, go ahead and type in a password. Click Save and Apply. Boom, password set. All right, now you can just click on the um, status tab and then you'll or an overview and you'll be right where I am. All right, so the first thing you'll need to do is actually get internet access. If you have not already, you'll need to hook up your router to an internet point. If you're doing what I am, what I'm doing is I'm having my OpenWRT router be the receiver. So I have a Wi-Fi router down there and I'm bridging to this. You can do this exact process in reverse, but you will have to plug your current router into this router via Ethernet. Once you have it connected, you should have Internet. If you're doing what I'm doing, you'll have to actually connect the wireless first. So let's go over here to Network. And let's go to Wi-Fi. Now let's go ahead and connect to our wireless access point. We're going to click Edit right here. And now you all are going to learn my super secret wireless setup information. So if you break into my house, you can steal my Wi-Fi too. Congrats. I already have it typed here because I've had it set up like three times. This is connecting to the access point. You have to, have to put a name here. You change mode to client. Since we're being a client, we're not hosting any Wi-Fi. And let's go to wireless security. And whatever your wireless security is. Mine is WPA2. Ooh, I am so fancy. I'm typing your password. Boom. Password entered. All right. So now we have our password here, and we have all this information. You want to put it as WAN, since that's where your inter whatever your uh, internet is coming from, you'll have in WAN. LAN is for the um, other thing. So if you're doing it backwards, sorry, I don't have a tutorial for that right now. If you request a backwards tutorial, then I may do it in the future, when I have a little bit more money to buy another router. But until then, this is the way I'm doing it. All right. Because there are a bunch of tutorials to show you the other way. This is the more exciting way. Click save and apply if you didn't see me do that already. As you can see, it's doing fancy stuff right there. All right. Now we got to click enable. This is because you see it says network is wireless network is disabled. 
network enable. Network is enabled. All right. So did it automatically apply that? I forget. Let's just click save and apply anyway, just to be safe. I'm waiting for router. All right. So the next thing we will need to do is, oh, hello there, badly rendered HTML page. If you ever get an error like that, just go back to the main thing. You'll have to sign in again. It's annoying, but I mean, it's not that bad. All right. So it says it's currently not connected. So the first thing we'll want to do before we do anything else is put this on a different subnet. Because if you're, uh, you'll want to go to a computer that's working and check the IP address with IP config. Don't do this on the one you're currently working on. You want to have, do it on one that has internet access. I'm just giving you an example. And then uh, up here on Ethernet address, it'll say like 192.168.something. That is your IP address. If it's dot one dot something, that means your your router is giving out normal uh, IP segments with these first three sets. So the sec the third set is what you actually want to pay attention to. If it's if for whatever reason if you have a zero here, then don't do what I'm doing. You just want to have the uh, opposite. So if it's a zero here, you put a one there. You'll see what you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let me try to make it a little bit easier to understand. All right. So network, and we have LAN over here. So sorry if I made that confusing. I'm going to explain it right now. I make things confusing all the time. <clears throat> all right, so here's the address of our router. You want to be very careful to have it different as the address of your current network. Remember I was talking about this third set right here? That is what you don't want to have. You don't want to have these two things connecting because your router, your real router, your main one you got from your ISP, will have this address, the one under the default gateway. So if you have this address on both of them, it will get upset. And also, since we're using a relay, you can't actually have it visible on the current network because it's supposed to not exist. All it's supposed to do is just pass data um, back and forth between the two nodes. So simply put, if you have a 1 here in your default gateway and IP address, you want to change this to a 0. Easy as that. If for whatever reason your main IP address Let's go back here, is 0 dot whatever, and your default gateway is 0 dot 1, and you want to put a 1 there. You can just leave, you can actually just leave it. All right, so now let's go ahead and click Save and Apply. Do the next step while we wait. Next step is going back into those settings again. Change adapter settings. Here is our access point. Let's just right click. Properties. And IPv4, we'll change this to a zero. And change this to a zero. Basically what we're doing is we're changing our subnet to match what we changed the router to. We have to change the router's number so it's invisible to the rest of the network. Not really invisible, but that's just the word I'm choosing to use. Basically it's not showing up in the same list as everything else, so it won't break anything. And now that we're on that network, we can we're on the like just hit we'll say the hidden subnet. We'll just call it the hidden part. We're on the hidden part. We gotta type in a new address. Dot zero dot one one nine two one dot one six eight dot zero dot one. Hit enter. And hey look, we're back. We had to do it's very important that we do this now, because if you do this in a later step when we actually connect the two networks together, then you can actually cause an IP confliction. Those aren't that fun. So, next step. Go to network. This is where I usually get lost because I can't usually get it connected to Wi-Fi. Okay, so the m important thing I always keep missing is we have to make sure that on the WAN interface we only have one actual connection. So how you do that is, this is the part that always messes me up, so I'm happy that I figured it out this fast. Click on WAN and click on edit like I did before. Go to physical settings and dis, not disconnect, uncheck bridge interfaces and make sure it's only pointing to your receiver, which for us is wireless network. Click save and apply and it should magically start working. Updating. All right, let's click status. Come on, please. Awesome, look, we're connected. See that? Yeah, we're cool. All right, now that we're connected, we can actually set up the um, LAN, the thing we're on. Because I'm, like I said, you're connecting to your router through a wired cable, so you can connect it to wireless. 
basically, uh, I, I explain that terribly. Okay, we are connected directly to the router. That's all you need to know. Oh, look, we now sign in again. Not a huge fan of OpenWRT in the last couple of days, but it works better than the TP-Link stupid default firmware. So, all right, so here we go. We got LAN. Click Edit, and we're going to disable DCHP servers because that will conflict with your routers handing out IP addresses. If you guys want to know what any of these things mean, I know a good 60% of them, so just ask me in the comments. Click save and apply, by the way. Alright, status. Now, we have our two networks, and we have network, if you want to test, make sure this connection is actually working, you can go to, where is it, I think it's under system, there's something called um, diagnostics. Uh, network, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, network diagnostics, and you just go ahead and click ping, and we'll see if it's working. If it is, we'll be able to move on to the next step. Awesome. Ping successful, we're connected to the network. Now we're going to start installing the packages we'll need. Software, logins, and stuff. Why am I not narrating? Oh, sorry. I am super sorry, guys. You have to click on the uh, update packages button to make it actually update a list of software you can download. We're going to be downloading some stuff, so, so there'll be an update packages button there. You just go ahead and click that, and you'll have the latest list of packages. Just find a packages box. Just type in relay. Relay. Click find packages. Click available packages. So we need relay D, which is right here, and we need Lucy Proto Relay. So we're gonna have to do them one at a time. First one's Relay D. Click install. Install Relay D. Yes. All right. Configuring Relay D. So it should be done. So there's nothing spinning. All right. Type in Relay again so we can see the few packages in the list that match. Available packages. And Lucy Proto Relay, that's what we're going for. So, click install. Install Lucy Proto, yes. Alright, and we got that. Alright, so now we're just about done. Go ahead and click Network. And we're going to add a new interface. I'm going to call mine Stargate. We want to have as a relay. So we have a name, doesn't matter what you call it. Protocol is Relay Bridge. Click Submit. And local address. You can't actually do anything on this address. Like I tried calling up the router, it didn't work. So I don't know what the point of this is, but you have to do it anyway. So you want to have this IP address in the same range as your um, internet access network. So remember before I said don't have a 1 if you had a 1 in your um, IP config thing? You want to have this match your IP range, but you want to have it really far out. So you want to have a, the last digit a big number. I'll show you what I mean. This is the prefix for all the addresses on your network. 192.168.1. Yeah, for the last part of the range, I'm sorry, for the last part of the address, you want to have it something your router will never reach. Most routers start with two, since your main router is one. And they give that to the first computer, and then they just keep going. The second computer is three, third computer is four. So what you'll probably never see is something at 200 range. I'm going to do 254. Just give myself some space. All right. You can use that number if you want. Um, there shouldn't be anything else on that spot. If you want to check, uh, you'd have to ping that. Just pick a really big number that's no bigger than 255. Anyway, okay. You want to relay between networks. You pick. LAN and WAN, because WAN is our internet, remember, that's what we have as a wireless, and LAN is our local network where all the USB, sorry, I keep calling USB, where all the uh, Ethernet ports are plugged in. Click Save and Apply. <coughs> and it's applying changes. Awesome. Let's go to status to make sure everything's working. And, okay, we have wireless connected, we have LAN connected, we have 54% signal strength. Basically you'll want to, you can, it's a good idea to have this tab open so you can see how uh, good your signal strength is connected to your uh, main router. So you can, you know, reposition 
the um, receiving unit to try to get the optimal signal. 54 is pretty bad, actually. Let's go to network, firewall. Okay, we got hand forward from LAN to WAN to accept. Save and apply. Waiting for router. All right, I'm going to try to sign in on my PS3. It's off screen so you can't see it. Hey, it worked. Okay, so that's all the last, the last thing you have to do. So let's go ahead and go back. Open settings. Change adapter settings. Properties. IPv4. Auto obtain both. Let's see if the DNS is able to go through. Rockbox.org. Oh, I probably didn't even. Oh, here we go. It's still loading the um, new settings from the DHCP server. Boom! All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. So it's not terrible, and it works. I just tested with my PS3. This works too. I can go to multiple pages, so it's not just cached or anything. As you can see, wow, I got a lot more devices here. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope at least one person out there finds this helpful. If you do, please let me know. Oh, I forgot to download another backup. Yes, remember, always get backups, guys. They're super helpful because do you really want to do this process again if something happens to your router? The whole reason I had to make this video was because my router um, settings got messed up. So don't be like me. Always make a backup. That should be, otherwise you'll spend, like, that should just be a rule. Otherwise you'll spend half an hour trying to figure out how to set it up again. Because you saw, this is like, this is literally live, how long it took me to get it set up, so. You can't have your IP address the same as the router, or else it breaks the planet. So, you have to make sure yours is different. Alright, we got it done. Let's go open up the browser again. All right, system, system, this is definitely not going on my main channel. All right, and careful not to click this or you'll have to start all over again. You want to generate backup. All right, now the last thing you do is, this is what I do whenever I do any type of computer stuff. You always want to make sure it survives a reboot. So we're going to reboot the router. I'm going to change my um, settings back because basically if you completely fix the computer problem and you walk away and the person turns back on, turns off their computer when they go to sleep and turns it back on when they wake up and it's not working, you're going to have to go back out there and fix it for them. So you want to always make sure you restart whatever you're doing just to make sure whatever you fixed stays fixed. Alright, restarted the router. It says we're still connecting. we got to wait for it to actually... Finish restarting, it probably takes about a minute or so. Alright, we see spinning again, which means it's getting something new from the network, that's good. We don't have Rotbox open, so we can use that as our test page again, it's pretty small, so. Boom! Alright! Good, we're finally done. It only took us like a little over half an hour, but we got it working. So I guess I'll see you guys later, thanks for watching this video, I'll see you guys later, peace.